Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a joy for me to be here. Um, and I want to bless the Lord for this very noble opportunity that he's granted to me to share God's word with us during this uh, particular um, noble, noble time. Please bow your heads with me for a word of prayer before we, we start off. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much. We, we, we glorify you. We bless you. We adore you for who you are. You are a faithful God. You are an able God. You are a loving God. Thank you so much, O oh God, for yet another most beautiful opportunity for us to meet, for us to meet online for your word. Father, may you come and dwell in us. May you come and have your way in us. May you speak to us in clearer accents. May you silence every other voice that, that runs around in this place. May you come and have your way in us. Speak to me that I may speak to your people. To your glory, O oh Lord, and for your glory, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Friends, friends, Amen. allow me, video. allow me send a video. Send a video. Uh, my video. network. All right. All right. My network is uh, um, is is not so good. So uh, I'll, I'll 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 try to to put off my video. I'll try to put it on. For some intervals, I'll put it off. For other intervals, I'll uh, I'll be putting it um, off. But for now, let me put it off, and I will run very fast uh, for. Um, you have muted yourself, Reverend Cyrus. As, sorry, as given a topic, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for revival. And, and like uh, our text read, Acts chapter 10, verse 14 through to 18. And by the end of this very short sharing, friends, someone on this platform, someone on this call shall probably have prepared themselves for the move, for the massive move of the Holy Spirit of God. Someone on this call perhaps will have opened their eyes to realize the need for revival and awakening in their lives. And probably in every, in every life's aspect where one need be. Friends, if I put into consideration the current state of affairs in the church, in the country, me and you ought to collectively agree in one way or the other that maybe we need a revival. That maybe we, we, we perhaps need an awakening of a kind. We need a renewal. We need a restoration. We need something, something that, that, that will revive our faith, something that will put us back onto the, 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 the old, old roots, as the Bible says. And this will only come, friends, if only, if only, we grant the Holy Spirit of God room to play out his role. It is my prayer that by the end of this sharing, every one of us shall have opened their hearts to the glory and for the glory of God, just to grant the Holy Spirit room to speak to us, to play out his very, very most pertinent role. Many of us, friends, many of us, if we may agree, many of us, even on this particular call, have in one way or the other silenced the Holy Spirit. Many of us have silenced the Holy Spirit of God. The very way someone would, would, would perhaps silence a toddler in the neighborhood, a toddler that's making noise in the neighborhood, the very way we would silence them is the very way many of us on this call have silenced. We have glued up the Holy Spirit of God. And many times, even when he tries to speak, we don't happen to tend in our ears to him. Friends, this, this afternoon, God is asking us. God is calling upon every one of us on this call. God is asking you, you and I, the very way it happened during the times of the, the, the book of Acts, during the apostolic times, the very way it happened, the very way there's a move of the Holy Spirit all over, he's asking the church today. God is asking us this afternoon to wake up, to revive ourselves after hearing from the Holy Spirit. Like I said, there can never, there, there can never be, there can never be a revival minus the Holy Spirit. In fact, friends, there can never be a revival minus the Holy Spirit. Power and his doing. Every revival from those revivals I've come to read of, the East African revival, the Irish revival, the English revival, none of those revivals happened minus the move of the Holy Spirit. So if ever we're going to have a revival in the church of Uganda, a revival on this platform, a revival in our lives, we have to first and foremost understand and as well hear from the Holy Spirit of God. The apostles, for example, many a times consulted the helper, 
the apostles of Jesus in their times and in their every endeavor, they consulted the Holy Spirit of God. And no wonder the church during the, the, the apostolic times spread like a wildfire in and out. The church spread. And for the first time, the Bible says they were, they were called Christians after the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so, because the apostles obeyed the inner man, the inner voice of the Spirit, because they trusted his leading, no matter the consequences. For example, when you read the book of Acts chapter 10, from that particular uh, chapter that we read, Acts chapter 10, particularly verse 19, the Bible says, Peter followed on on the voice of the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer this afternoon that every one of us shall hear from the Holy Spirit, that every one of us shall render ear to that particular small still small voice in our hearts, that voice that renders us out, that voice that, that speaks to us, a, 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 a vo a, that, that voice of, of, of hope, that voice of, of revival, that voice of, of unawakening, that voice of restoration. It is my prayer that this afternoon, every one of us shall, shall wax off their ears to listen and hear from the spirit. And if, 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 if friends, we can, we can, if we cannot submit, if you cannot submit to the doing of the Holy Spirit, if we cannot listen into the voice of the Holy Spirit, then trust me, there can never be a revival. A revival begins, like I said, with submission to the voice of God, and that would be through the Holy Spirit of God. And the moment he speaks to us, the moment he speaks to our lives, the moment he speaks into our lives, we must be faithful enough. We must be faithful enough to react and at the same time act accordingly, just like Peter did in Acts chapter 10. Verse 19, this afternoon, friends, God is summoning every one of us, everyone on this call, to submit to that voice within you. It might be a voice that sends you out for ministry. It might be a voice that convicts you of a hidden sin. It might be a voice that convicts you to witness to a soul out there. It must be a, it, it, it could be a voice of anything. It could be a voice that wakes you up from, 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 the, from, from that deep sleep of yours, listening understand that this afternoon God is here to speak to us through the Holy Spirit and it is after that Holy Spirit speaks to us that there shall be a revival in this church. Not to forget a revival is an awakening, a revival is a renewal, a revival is a doing of the Holy Spirit, a revival is a submission to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And if I may borrow a leaf friends from Acts chapter 2, what happened at Pentecost on, on the day of Pentecost? That's that which happened that day is what we call a revival. And from there, it is imminent. From there, we happen to see that the apostles adhering to the call. We saw them going out. We saw them preaching the word. We see them bringing many to God. We see them healing multitudes. We see them standing in the space and, and, and in the face of persecution. Mm -hmm. Why? For they hardened to the voice of God. And this reminds us that when we submit to the Holy Spirit, we do exploits. When we submit to the will, of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we can ably go out and do exploits to the glory and for the glory of God. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit outpours, friends, there has to be an awakening. Whether you like it or not, the moment he outpours, there has to be an awakening. We are given strength. Friends, when, we, when he comes to us, we are given strength. <laughs> We, are, we, we go out to witness. We are given strength to preach the word of God. We are given strength to stand in the face of persecution. We are given strength to preach the word of the Lord. And it is from within the word of God that we preach that there shall be a revival. And not to forget, friends, however, not to forget, like, like the Bible says in John, that when you read John, the gospel, 16, 18, that when he comes, when the Holy Spirit of God outpours, he'll prove to the world of being in the wrong. We all know about the role of the Holy Spirit. One of the roles of the Holy Spirit is he reminds us of our sin. And so the moment he outpours in our lives, he brings what? He comes to us and he reminds us of that particular sin in our lives. And before a revival happens, friends, there has to be deliberate and purposeful confession of sin. Whether you like it or not, the moment he outpours, the moment the Spirit of God pours out, whether you like it or not, there has to be deliberate and purposeful confession of sin. And so, friends, this afternoon, God is saying, hear unto the Holy Spirit. Hear from the Holy Spirit. And when you hear from the Holy Spirit, abide 
by what he says. I'm reminded, meanwhile, as I share of the of, 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 of what the psalmist says in, in, in Psalm 51, verse 10, that particular hymn that we usually that, that, that worship uh, song that we usually that we usually sing during our worship services. Creating me a clean heart, oh God. And renew our right spirit within me. The psalmist clearly puts it into our ears that we do not, if we do not confess our sins, if we do not hear from the Holy Spirit's doing in our lives, meanwhile, as it brings, uh, brings us down to our sin, there shall never be a revival. If we do not confess our sins, there's not going to be a revival. When we do not cast away our, our old self, the Holy Spirit of God can never dine with us. It is my prayer this afternoon that every one of us shall do away with our old self because we need a revival. And minus, 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 minus confessing our sin, we might not see a revival any soon. This simply means there shall be no revival, not even at all. We are reminded, friends, like I said this afternoon, that if we are to be causers of revival, then we must be deliberate in purifying ourselves. We must be deliberate and intentional unto holy living. Let me get to the text we just read. Acts chapter 10, verse 14 through to 18. Let me very briefly look at this. When you read that particular text, Peter was stuck. Peter was still stuck in the old self. Peter was stuck in the old self. Even when God brings in a new voice, Peter is stuck. Peter is caught up in the old self. And even when God desired that he adheres to a new living, Peter is adamant to see that. But thank God, somewhere around the corner, he happens to hear from the voice of the Holy Spirit. If we are honest enough, friends, with ourselves, every one of us on this call, if you are honest enough with yourself, you will know that your life does not shine out enough evidence of the faith that we say we profess. Be honest to yourself. Do you really go right out there and live as God desires? Do you really go out there and, and live exactly as the face you profess say? This afternoon, there's a chance for you. Meanwhile, as the Spirit of God pours out on us, there's a chance for you to revive yourself. The church itself, take an example. The church is battling against a very wicked tide of evils. There are a lot of stuff happening in our church today. A lot of stuff is happening in our various churches. You know, you, you, you people had what happened in Kumi here. You know, what is happening in our brothers, the born again uh, church um, faith? You know, what is happening there is not so good. And that is what we, that is not what we call a revival. How can you stand before a, a congregation and, and, and you defend your sin? I mean, not, not until as a church we bow down and confess our sin to God. This revival is not going to be part of us in any way. Friends, do you go out there and act according to the faith that you profess? That's a question for you to ponder upon. All these, all these things we see in church today call for confession, call for a revival, they call for repentance. Beloved, we ought to repent. In fact, there was, if, if there was any need for revival, friends, if there was any need for revival, it has to be today. May the Holy Spirit begin now to remind everyone on this afternoon call of their sin. May the Lord remind you, may that Spirit of God speak to you in a still small voice about your sin. The text we, we, we read last Friday, I was on this call last Friday, River Desmond was preaching to us. And he preached about, uh, about from, from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, those that are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the Bible says, I will turn and I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. The word if that begins that statement, the word if that begins that promise calls us unto humility. We are called upon to humble ourselves, examine ourselves, pray in the light of God's righteousness. And it is from then on that God will then hear from heaven and he shall forgive our sin. Minus this, friends, we might not experience a revival. Remember that Holy Spirit of God does not operate from where there's discord. Uh, that Holy Spirit of God, friends, does not operate from where there's discord. Where there's discord, he runs away. When there's a cord, he comes back and he speaks. When, listen, what happened when Peter and John healed a lame man at the gate in the book of Acts? What happened? The religious elite of that time, the Bible says they warned 
John and Peter not to speak about Christ, but what they did was good and simple. They maintained the unity of the spirit. And when every soul, when, when the enemy, when the enemy in any way sows discord in us, we are called upon to maintain that unity. Friends, how I pray that we may keep this bond, this unity on the online call. How I pray that we may become family, that we may become one in Christ, that we shall maintain that, 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 that accord, that, 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 that will grant the Holy Spirit room to speak to us, to illuminate the word of God to us, and to as well set us out to be witnesses of the good word of the Lord. Friends, we are called upon to repent on this call. If there's going to be a revival, God is asking every one of us to repent. God is asking every one of us to look into themselves and mind about themselves, to go out and be servers, to go out and be causers of a revival. We ought to pray and repent. There's a certain philosopher I was reading about. His, his name is Dr. A.T. Pearson. He once said, let me read. Dr. Dr. Uh, A.T. Pearson once said, there has never been a spiritual awakening in any country that did not begin in prayer. Uh -huh. There has never been a revival anywhere. And, for, and from the simple and, and small revivals I've come to read about, every revival begins with a, with a move, with a deliberate move of prayer. Every revival begins with a deliberate move of prayer that is being pushed, that is being induced of the Holy Spirit. We ought to pray. Meanwhile, as we pray, we have to deliver every transgression of ours before God. And if we need a revival in this country, and if we need a revival in this church, it is going to come after. After. It is going to come after we're given to, 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 to repentance. Friends, it is my prayer. It is after that. It is after that, that repentance, that we will see evident fruits of a revival. Every revival must come with fruits. There has to be changed lives. There has, there, there has to be a stampede to Christ. There has to be, people must confess their sin. We will, we, we, we will be, there shall be deliberate holy living, deliberate and purposeful holy living. People shall yearn to live holy for Christ, to live righteous for Christ. And beloved, let me conclude. Anyone, let me, let me try to run very fast as I conclude. <laughs> if we are in any way, if we are, in any way, going to experience the power of this revival. I want to summarize for us, I wrote down three points here. If we are going to receive this Holy Spirit, if this Holy Spirit of God is going to outpour unto us for a revival, then first and foremost, there has to be confession. There has to be confession. Confess, child of God, whatever the Spirit brings to your attention. Confess everything that the spirit of God brings to your attention. If there's anything that he brings to your attention, confess. Secondly, read, study, meditate upon the word of God. Read, study, meditate upon the word of God. In that office of yours, you can read the word of God. In a taxi, in that taxi, you can read the word of God. On your phone, you can read the word of God. Everywhere, there's no revival that's gonna happen minus reading the word of God. Mm -mm. It's not gonna happen. You must read the word of God, and after you read the word of God, meditate upon it. And right after you meditate upon it, go out there and act from within the jurisdictions of that word. And thirdly, friends, go out there, place yourself in a fellowship. Place yourself in a fellowship. Place yourself in a fellowship. Some of us get so busy sometimes to get on this call. That's, that, that's a disease. That's too bad. Place yourself in a fellowship somewhere. Because in these fellowships, we pray for one another. In these fellowships, we seek God as never before. In these fellowships here, we have friends that watch over us. We have friends that stand in the gap for us. I'm grateful to God for this online fellowship. Friends, this is a revival. <laughs> this online fellowship is a revival. And this is what happens when the Spirit of God outpours on us. No wonder I meant to understand this fellowship received a lot of a lot of resistance in the baby steps. It received a lot of resistance. But either still, 
we are standing. <laughs> we are here and we shall forever stand to the glory and for the glory of God. Friends, I now commission us to go out there and be causers of revival. I now commission us to go out there and be impactors of change. I now commission us to go out there and be lovers of God and be causers of revival. Meanwhile, as we read the word of God, secondly, as we look into ourselves to read God's word, to, 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 to confess our sin and to place ourselves in a fellowship somewhere. To the glory and for the glory of God. Amen.